Okay, what a great room to be in. I feel like I am back home. Not only is this the campus that is responsible for my degree, so you can hold them responsible if you want to, but this is the place I got to cast my very first vote. This is the place, and please don't do the math, but please, this is the place I got to cast my first vote for Ronald Reagan because I was a freshman um, on the campus of Oklahoma Christian, and so it is only fitting that we get to come back here and have this debate. I'm also so excited to be a part of a chamber event. Uh, the chamber is so active here. You all have always been terrific to candidates and welcoming, and I truly appreciate that. It was the chamber that stood behind me and my family as we stepped up to run for mayor. And it was only a few short years ago that we did that. It was a little more than five years ago, my family and I decided that we would step up to the challenge and we would run for mayor. And what I remember specifically is that um, we had a telephone bank set up in my playroom at my house. And I remember Teo Fichtel, who was the head of our local community hospital, sitting in my playroom making phone calls. And Ken Moore was there, and Jan Moran was there, and a lot of folks were there making phone calls. And with your help, I did it. We did it. We got elected mayor of this town, and we focused on small business. We focused on what was important here. So um, we accomplished a lot in the time that I got to be mayor. We have a public safety center. We have roads that we didn't have before, and we focused on the partners that were important to us, UCO, OC, and our public school system. So what I ask is that I get the opportunity to be your voice again. You stood behind me and with me before, and I ask for you to do that again on June 24th. Thank you. I'm excited to get to do that. Um, First, I think we need to recognize that we, in our lifetimes, are and looking at the opportunity to be energy independent and energy secure. It's the first time that we've had that opportunity. Technology is allowing that to happen. Uh, one thing that we need to do to move energy policy forward is we need to build a pipeline. We need to stamp that application approved and get that thing going. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we keep the regulation of the oil and gas industry local. This morning, I will vote, I don't know, 50, 60 times on oil and gas cases to allow us and our jobs to continue in this state. And if we have to rely on the EPA to do that, our industry will shut down. We in Oklahoma know how to regulate oil and gas. The EPA cannot do it better than us. They cannot do it more safely than us. And we need to keep that regulation local. Absolutely. I can say it in two words, jobs and debt. We have to increase one and we have to decrease the other. And I'm going to let you guess which ones I want to increase and which ones I want to decrease. And um, we have to allow small businesses in America to grow and thrive again. We have to help um, by stepping out of the way and letting them do that. My brother is running our family construction company. He turned down a job a few months ago that would have allowed him to bring on 16 new people because he's at 42 people and the uncertainty of what all the regulation would do um, if he added those 16 and went over that magic number of 50 kept him from creating jobs. And it's the story I hear across, um, across this district on the doorsteps is we're not creating jobs because we don't know what Dodd-Frank's going to do to us, because we don't know what Obamacare is going to do to us, and because we see a debt that is spiraling in a federal government that's out of control. So, in my mind, the economy is related to two things, jobs and debt. Number one, I'm going to remember that I'm your voice. You're putting me in a position to represent you, and we've been having copies all across the district. And at a lot of those copies, I will have people fill out a little card that says, when I'm in Washington, what do you want me to fight for for you? And most of the cards will say things like small business or fight for my family or um, keep the debt down so that my grandkids aren't suffering. But what I'm trying to get across is that I'm taking those cards with me because I remember that I am first and foremost your voice. So that's how I will be different. The second thing is that I will be able to take this wealth 
of life experience I have both as a mayor, as a banker, as a small business owner, as a person who now is in a regulatory environment. And I get to take all that knowledge with me to Washington, D.C. to help be your voice. I have seen a congressman who is uh, in that seat right now who has done a great job of working through a system that was broken. And he, has, he and I have been able to partner together to get some things done for Oklahomans and for taxpayers that in the newspaper last week shows that it's going to save taxpayers about $25 million. So I think we have to continue to work, and I will take my experience to D.C. to work through the system we have until we can get it fixed. Because we can't just keep saying, the system's broken, it won't work. We have to find ways to improve the economy, to improve Oklahoma, and to improve the 5th District in the system that we have until we can get it fixed. So I think we're going to have to continue working with the agencies, explaining to them why they don't need to come in and regulate oil and gas, working with the FCC, and explaining to them why some of their regulations are out of hand. So that's how I believe I will be different. Well, thanks again to all the chamber folks for hosting this. Thanks to John DeSteiger for opening up the campus of Oklahoma Christian to these candidates. It's always an, it's a privilege to be on this campus, and it's a privilege to be a part of this group. So a few years ago when we were first knocking doors, my son Patrick, I think, was about 13. And we had spent a long day knocking doors. We knocked so many doors when we were running for mayor. And as we were walking back up this long, dusty road, um, I said to Patrick, have you learned anything? And he goes, yep. It's not rocket science, Mom. I said, no. He said, people want a safe place to live. They want their kids to do better than they did. And in Edmond, they want roads. And I said, that's right. And he goes, if you can't do it, don't run. So out of the mouth of babes, I mean, you really learn lessons when you take your son door knocking. So guess what? I've taken him door knocking with me again this time. And we were knocking doors um, in the district. And he said to me, Mom, people don't care whether you're mayor or you're going to Congress. They want the same things. They want a safe place for their families to live. They want, um, they want their kids to do better than they did. And they still want roads. And I laughed and I said, you're right. So I think that we have to remember what we're learning on the doorsteps. We have to remember the experiences we've had in life. I grew up um, in a small family business. My dad started it when I was 14. As your banker, um, many of you were my customers. I had the opportunity to work with you to grow your small businesses. As your mayor, we got to focus on that. We got to focus on how to make Edmond a better place and how to work with our partners. That's what I want to do as your representative in Congress. I want to be your voice. So once again, I'm asking you to back me. I'm asking you to vote on June 24th and to vote for me to be your voice in Congress. Thank you.